Luke Laurie, a science teacher at El Camino Junior High School in the Santa Maria Benita School District, was recently named Santa Barbara County Teacher of the Year. Let's visit Luke's classroom and see why he's such an outstanding representative for all the teachers in Santa Barbara County. Today, we are going to work on robotics. I need everyone to turn their attention here. I'm a local for the most part. Um, I grew up in San Luis Obispo County. Um, I went to school in Los Osos and Morro Bay, and I've lived in Los Osos, Morro Bay, San Luis Obispo, Grover Beach, and Santa Maria. Um, I went to Cuesta Community College after finishing Morro Bay High School and uh, graduated from Cal Poly. I have uh, degrees from Cuesta, Cal Poly, and um, I also have a master's degree in credentials from Cal Poly as well. We're going to get the Mindstorm software open. Your laptops should already be on. Don't open them yet. But when we open them up, they should be on and just asleep. Mr. Lori is a cool teacher. He like helps us out and explains to us how to build our robots and helps us with whatever we need help with. I was always somewhat interested in being a teacher from the time when I was pretty young. Um, and I had. Uh, experimented with several different careers. Uh, going to community college gave me the opportunity to take classes in several of the careers I was interested in. I was in the uh, Cuesta Jazz Ensemble. I did theater at Cuesta. I um, also took classes in business and automotive mechanics. And uh, the course that really got me was uh, the introduction to teaching. And I became very interested in teaching and also educational issues and uh, decided that going into a um, college major that would uh, allow me to study the diverse things that I could study um, on my way to becoming a teacher was what I really wanted to do. Um, so I went to Cal Poly and um, had a great time with my education there and was fortunate enough to be hired in Santa Maria. So you make a new program, you call it whatever you want, and then you're going to be doing all of your programming over here. Today, I'm looking especially for cooperation. I'll be rewarding and looking for cooperation today. So I have a discipline system that I use in my class, and I call it the colors of success. I invented this, sort of, in my first year. I kind of adopted it from various other um, kinds of uh, positive discipline systems. So what I have done is I have these little slips of paper and they have um, virtues on them, such as respect, responsibility, cooperation, courage, focus. And what I do is, as I'm teaching and while students are working, I am giving out those slips as reminders of what those positive behaviors are. So when students are respectful, I try to remind them that that's a positive thing to do, and I give them a respect slip. When a group is cooperating particularly well, I give everyone in that group a cooperation slip. I find that this is far more effective than me telling the students what they're not doing correctly. For instance, um, my focus slips are particularly useful when I'm giving instruction, doing some kind of direct instruction, for example, and I'm watching that some of the students are paying attention and other students are not. Well, I continue with my lecture, but as I'm doing so, I'm walking around giving focus slips to the students who are paying attention. The students who are not paying attention see that the other students are receiving these focus slips, and their ears perk up, and their eyes turn towards me, and they begin to pay attention, or at least attempt to look like they're paying attention, um, because they realize that there is a, a reward for that. Um, for me, it makes my day feel a lot better when I'm not being negative and I'm not having to remind students that their behavior is negative. And I also tell them that you're 12 or 13 years old, you have heard all of these things, all of these negative things already. And it's time for me to teach you what all of these positive skills are that 
you will need to be successful people. What these are are measurements of rotation. So what happens is, is when I turn this, look at the number. See how now it went from zero to 444? That's 444 degrees of rotation. Mr. Lori is a, a good guy. Sometimes he's just strict, but he needs to be. And, well, he's fun. In 2006, I applied to become an Albert Einstein Distinguished Educator Fellow. Um, this is a special program that was authorized by an act of Congress. And what it does is it takes science and mathematics teachers from across the country and brings them to Washington, D.C. to contribute to public policy. Um, each year there are between 10 and 15 Einstein Fellows selected and usually four of them um, are lucky enough to work on Capitol Hill. In 2006, I was one of those fellows who was selected, um, when, was able to work on Capitol Hill. And after extensive interviewing process, I ended up working in the House of Representatives for Congressman Mike Honda. My duties there uh, included all the kinds of duties that a staffer would have, a legislative assistant on education, um, environmental policy, and that sort of thing. As uh, during that year, um, and it was an entire year that I worked in Washington, D.C., I had a tremendous learning curve where I was studying education policy. I was learning how, the, how a bill becomes a law in a true sense and all of the behind the scenes and uh, subtle nuanced details. And I also had the opportunity to work with a lot of uh, great people who are doing a lot of neat things for education policy. It was a very worthwhile experience. Um, it also brought some sacrifice. Uh, up and moving my family to Washington, D.C. for one year is a no easy task, and it was a great relief to return to the classroom in my hometown. Centimeters is how long something is, that's length. So we need to measure mass. What is the tool we use for measuring mass? I have a deal with my students. Um, and the, there is an exchange, and I actually talk about this overtly, especially with my robotics students. I explain to them that sometimes to, to make this all happen, I, I'm spending hours and hours outside of class, or I'm spending weeks sometimes on vacations, um, experimenting with new robotics activities and new technology to bring in. And I tell them, this is what I'm doing for you that they need to pay me back. The, the exchange is the success, the hard work, and the commitment that they put into the work that I'm asking them to do. The arrangement with my robotic science class is that they are simultaneously doing all of the eighth grade science standards, and we are learning all of the robotics, um, learning to program and build the robots as well. And it's all in the same class, and it isn't allotted any more time. The only way this class can work is if those students are more committed to doing more independent work. And these students are not necessarily any more academically capable than their peers who are not in the class. What's different is they've made that commitment. And I remind them of that commitment, that they need to step up to the plate. They'll need to do more independent reading, more independent studying, and in exchange, I teach them robotics. In a way, it's a win-win circumstance because I'm enabling them to learn more in exchange for them learning more. Oh.